Hi everyone. So today we're going to look at graphs of functions, section 2.4. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of things, but I actually already hinted at, or I talked about some of it back in my section 2.3 video. So if you go back there, look at the vertical line test back there, and you can look at things like finding the domain from a graph. Um, we're going to focus on just a couple of things here. This will be a pretty quick video actually. So here we go. Zeros. Zeros for functions are domain values that cause the function to spit out zero. So for instance, if we want to find the zeros of this function, we're going to start by setting it equal to zero. And you'll notice I have it factored. Um, maybe you can read that, maybe you can't, hopefully you can. So I have x squared minus five x plus six, and then I factored it to be x minus three times x minus two. Sorry, my marker was getting kind of bad. Um, so I split it up because we can split, when we have pieces multiplied to equal zero, we can split it up. So x minus three could be zero, which gives us three. X minus two could be zero, which gives us two. So anyway, that's how, we're gonna, that's how we find zeros. We just set the function equal to zero and we figure out what x values will make that happen. Now, one important fact, and we'll talk a little bit more about this here in just a second and put our calculators to use too. The real zeros are also the x-intercepts for the function. So for the graph. So if you have a function, and you can find its zeros, those are going to be your x-intercepts, which is kind of handy when you're making a graph. All right, so let's talk about those calculators and let's get some new stuff on the board. All right, so to finish up this section, we have some information about uh, finding zeros using your calculator. So I have directions here. I have an example that I did on my calculator. So, you know, you can try and follow my, my, my directions um, to, to get the answers that I have over there. Um, because you're not gonna see my calculator. <laughs> that just won't work. All right, so first, hit that y equals button. Once you do, type in the function. So instead of having f of x, we're gonna use y. And for this, you just would type x squared minus seven x minus eight. Um, if you need more help using your calculator, go find some other YouTube videos. There are lots of videos out there for using your calculator. Um, but anyway, type it in. Once you do that, hit the graph button. After you hit the graph button, it's second trace. You're aiming for the for the word that says calc, and since it's above the button, it's it, you have to use the second button to get, get to it. Once you do that, pick the one that says zero, and then you're gonna follow the directions on your calculator. Basically, it's going to ask you for a left bound, a right bound, and then a guess. It wants you to fence in, so this graph, what it looks like is something kind of like this. down and it goes back up. It's just a basic parabola. But your calculator needs a little bit of help trying to figure out which zero you're looking for. So you're going to have to do them separately. You can't do them both at the same time. So you put a left bound, which means you're just going to move the little blinking cursor to the left side of the zero that you want. Then it'll ask you for a right bound. So you put it on the right hand side of the zero that you want. And then it wants a guess and you just get it as close as you possibly can. And so the zero then would be the x value. Right, the y value should be zero. That's all, kind of the whole point. Um, but and if you do that, these will be at negative one and at positive eight. And so that's a really nice trick for using your calculator uh, for as we go forward, and it'll be very useful. So there you go.